Okay, let's roll, folks. You're listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. <clears throat> yes, we're listener-supported, which means we need your help to stay on the air. We are non-commercial. This is the 183rd edition of Changing Reality, the most important things. I am the hijacker. That's what I try to traffic in if it's really important. You know, it's not just a bunch of girly chit-chat or it's not important. You know, uh, I don't I do not do that. So it is uh, April the 17th, the year of our Lord, 2013. And it's Wednesday night. And if it's Wednesdays, it's Wednesdays with Zen Garcia, author, writer, researcher, theologian. Uh, has written six books on a seventh. And um, uh, so let's open things up here. We've got a lot to talk about. Uh, Zen, are you with me? I am, brother. It's always a pleasure. Okay, great. Um, I guess what's on everybody's mind, Zen, is this open bombing at uh, the Boston Marathon. I mean, I don't know if you saw recently any of Alex Jones's, um uh, analysis or any of the analysis and other websites, but it's pretty much known it's a false flag. I mean, it's they got they got the military people there. Uh, wearing the seal emblems with all these big backpacks. They all got the same pants, the same shoes, um, same logos on their ball caps, um, numerous pictures from them all over the place. Um, I mean, I don't know what to make of this. What what, what do you make of this whole thing? Why do you think they're doing this? What, what's, what's this all about? Well, it's definitely they're pushing to strip us of our guns and strip us of our freedoms. It's been an agenda of theirs for a, a very, very long time. And that's, it's also to increase the budget for Homeland Security. Um, every time we have a similar type of event, like even with the Oklahoma City bombings and the bombings in New York, uh, even after 9-11, every time, um, the the budget has doubled and tripled for homeland security and for all the different you know um, uh, the different agencies like the FBI the CIA um all of them have increased budgets and are able to get more uh, vehicles tactical instruments um guns weapons bullets we know that they've been stockpiling ammo you can't even buy ammo now every time it comes into a, a gun store anywhere across america it's like it's immediately sold out i don't know if it's the same where you are but uh, i know here in in georgia you you can't even find nine millimeter shells uh 22 shells uh shotgun shells everything is sold out as soon as um it's offloaded from the trucks and and so there's definitely, you know, things being established. And this has been, it's been a long history uh, of false flag events. And, and, uh, one of the telltale signs is that there are always, um, drills going on to the, you know, to on top of the actual events. And, and there's, you know, people reported that even prior to the bombing that there were, uh, a number of bomb sniffing dogs and people in place at both the starting and and the finish line of this particular event and then there's also uh the numerology that is associated that is the the signature the the footprints of the illuminati and those secret societies that are um behind the scenes pulling the strings of things like this uh, I don't know if you noticed, Hijacker, but it went off at 3.22 p.m. in 3.22. Um, and then it was also the the bombing took place at 666 or near 666 Boyston Street. And, and you know, those are definitely satanic numbers. And so. Oh, uh, really? Now, let's wait a minute on this one, because this is new. Um, I thought it went off at. 252 but you're saying it went off at 322 uh, from one of the videos that i saw now and could be wrong but one of the videos it says that the bombing went off just a few minutes prior to 
um, it being televised live. And it was at 3.23 that this video clip was um, was streamed. And I, I believe it was a Fox News video clip. And it was saying that the bombing happened just moments before. So um, I was... I was assuming that that was three two two, but uh, I will have to double check on all that. Yeah, well, because I was looking for the numbers. Now, what I thought it was, I thought it was um, two fifty two, and if you add that up, is nine. And then also, I counted the, I saw the, on the timer uh, between the first blast and the second blast uh, was exactly thirteen seconds. Um, you know, I mean perfectly 13 seconds mm -hmm. between the first blast and then hearing the second blast. I, I watched a little counter, you know, after the first blast, you know, and then I watched it and then 13 seconds later and I tracked, I triple track checked it. So I'm mm -hmm. sure about that. So that's nine thirteen. So I thought those were the numbers we were dealing with, but um, you know, it's funny that we can't even get, if somebody can get the actual time, that the um, bomb went off, and I don't know why we can't get that number because uh, you know it's just it, mine's even a guesstimate from um, the 250, give or take a minute or so. So I'm not even sure about mine, but I don't know why they always put down the exact time this stuff happens in newspapers, and you can't get anything, which also points to you know. They know that the YouTube community is out there and people are awakened to all this occultic knowledge. And um, so maybe that's the reason they didn't put it in. But if somebody knows the exact time, has got the um, the police, you know, as soon as the police are connected or, or are contacted uh, and we can find that out, uh, that would be helpful to, to find out because there is numerology involved. I agree. Now the six six six, where do you get that from? Um, it it uh, there was a guy that was doing plotting where the end line was, the finish line on the Boston Marathon, the race, and one of the bombs went off at six six six, I mean six six seven Boyston Street. Um, I forget exactly what the the name of the guy was that was doing the video but he did a, a a number of analysis on the the numerology associated with it i have it on the fallenangels.tv website i posted a number of them um and i just actually sent you over skype a link to the video um it's a cnn video and you'll see um in the clip it says that the bombs went off moments before and the time on the the time stamp on the video is 3:22 p.m. eastern so check that out when you get a chance but um and let me check on on my i think his name was Dabu uh he does a a, a number of different analysis on YouTube yeah Dabu, Dabu 07 or something like that yeah yeah, he's, yeah. He's pretty good uh -huh. Right, and so on the Fallen Angels TV website, one of the featured videos is an analysis that he did, and in his analysis, he speaks about the numerology and the connections between uh, where the finish line was and where the bombs went off, and they actually went off um, near, you know, like I said, six 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 Boyston Street. So you well, know, no, you're right, Zen. Um, this is live. The bomb just goes off, and you are right. It's at three um, twenty-two Eastern Standard yeah. Time. Three two two, right? Wow. And um, this is live. CNN. The bomb just went off. Mm-hmm. So, and you see um, the timestamp there, three twenty-two p.m. So. Yeah. No, there's no getting around that. That's exactly when the bomb went off. Right. And or, so. Um, that definitely seems to be the uh, Illuminati numerology and the uh, signature, a timestamp for, you know, their involvement within it. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, wow. And then 13 seconds later, the next bomb goes off. Right. Um, 
Yeah, so, and now I know there's a big, I know the Druids, uh, they got a Dark Lord, and I, I, I can't remember the name, it's, it, you know it, you know all these, all these gods and goddesses, Sam something, Sam, Sam Hain, Sam Hain, right, Sam Hain, right, the Lord of Darkness, the Druid, and I heard that that, on the 15th, it's a big date on the, uh, the Druid calendar, April the 15th. Yeah, it's also um, part of a a Roman sacrificial festival, too. Um, I was sent an email about it and about how April 15th is connected to this particular sacrificial um, a festival. It's a Roman festival, and they it also is a, a seven-day celebration uh, that continues on through the 22nd of of April. Uh, and the interesting thing about this is for those that have looked into um, the Family Guy episode where he speaks about, you know, the it shows him uh, he had won the Boston Marathon and then he dials a number on his cell phone and it causes an, an explosion. And then he does it again and it causes a second explosion but if you, uh, one of my friends sent me an analysis, analysis of the entire clip, and he said that on the 22nd, that there's another um, bombing that occurs on a bridge. Uh, I'll have to look it up exactly, but um, so there might possibly be further repercussions yet to come uh, in a, you know, in a few days, and this, this pagan celebration the sacrificial celebration is ongoing from april 15th through um the 22nd and so who knows if we'll you know see further things and and then we have the the ricin attacks you know that were sent to the senator and and to obama um and that all ties together with people forget about the anthrax tax that happened um you know the same simultaneously with not the 9-11 attacks and how all that was done to, to hype up the fear as well. Yeah, and also, this is breaking, um, there was a big explosion at a, fer uh, at a fertilizer factory in uh, Waco, Texas, about an hour or so ago. Right, right. Yeah, so I, I, I know what, about that too. I'm not sure what that is. We, we do got a caller uh, that's, that's calling here, uh, Zen, and that's... Uh, R3, let's rectify. R3, uh, you there? He's also, he does a round table once a week, sometimes twice a week. Well, sometimes three, four days a week um, as a host. So uh, rectify, you there? Yeah. Hey, Zen. Hey, hi, Jack here. I just wanted to um, bring up the fact that I know exactly where the triple six comes in um, if, if it indeed happened at 322. Um, the 22nd letter of our alphabet is the letter V which in Hebrew is the Vav, which represents six. So when you have three 22s, you have three sixes. And that, that also is the representation number for the Skull and Bone Society out of Yale. Isn't uh, that also the, what, the, you know, the monster, the drink? Energy drink, yeah. That's the actual yeah. Hebrew symbols. Is, those are the three Vavs. Right. And they also defile the cross in the monster energy drink. Uh, when you look at where it says monster, you'll see a cross and the O, uh, a, a, a V defiling the cross to create the O in monster. But I just wanted to bring that, bring that up. And I, what I did is I dropped, um, one of the, those charts to actually show you all the, the letters there in, in, um, producer Skype here chat so i just wanted to bring that to your guys's attention because if indeed it happened at 322 it's very significant and it points directly to triple six yeah i agree with you brother oh yeah well we now know we can see the guys with the backpacks uh they were running drills that was mentioned in the boston globe also another newspaper um uh even though the governor and the police chief and all the rest said no no there was no drills uh they announced it in the actual those two newspapers and on News 15 in Boston um, that there were going to be simulated as explosions and for people not to panic. And uh, when they were confronted by a reporter at their news conference, 
this reporter, he he was mad. He just wouldn't let it go. He goes, so now you're going to justify T uh, T S H T S A from um you know putting our hands down our pants now? Is that what this is about? More police state? And he was he was pretty upset. Anyways, that whole gang of people, they just walked out of that news conference. They said, we're not saying nothing no more. You know, it looked like a bunch of guilty kids uh, walking away. So it's pretty much well known that um, uh, this, this seems to be a false flag. Now, if, so if they're doing this, then, and they're using all of this occultic, and that's the other question I have for you. Um, so your, your, your main theory is that, well, we are all spirits spirits were the first created things in creation uh, that's what god decided to do first so in a sense we are all sons of god or angels so to speak and so you had some fall uh they started some kind of war um and then they were knocked down a few frequencies or a few dimensions and they got locked in whether it's this physical dimension or whether they can move a dimension but why is it why is it then that they are so, what is it about the serpentine race of these fallen ones, these reptile, uh, human hybrid snake eyed people? What is it about these people that they just, they, they love symbols and numbers and, and, and phalluxes and laying cities out a certain way and ley lines and, uh, astronomy and alignments of planets and new moons. I mean, why so much, why they're so enamored over, it seems like it's magical, occultic inner workings of maybe even how the universe works. I don't even know, but why is it that they gravitate so much to, you know, putting their symbols like on the monster drink and all that? You got, a, you got an explanation for that, Zen? Well, it's, it's them bragging, first off. They're boasting... Uh, to each other that basically they rule and they oppress uh, humanity and the masses and they rule with impunity. And that's why they place all their symbolism all over. Even the, the Taco Bells have 666 around the, um, around the, the building exterior. Um, and so these kind of things, the 322, the 666, uh, the different things that are connected to the Illuminati, uh, even the, the eye and the pyramid, uh, the different symbols, even with the CBSI, all these different corporate logos, um, uh, they, they are all connected to the ritual and the occulticism and the magic that they are all involved in because the, the fallen angels were the ones that brought to humanity the secrets of, of heaven. And so they were the ones that shared these mysteries with certain elitists, certain individuals and people and families, you know, that they um, became involved with. And, and it's their way of, of boasting about their superiority. And it's their way of also making fun of us as the useless eaters, as those that, because uh, most people don't understand all the corporate logos. They, can't see through the symbolism they have no idea why things are the way that they are um why the number 13 and uh, different things like that are always found you know contained within these different corporate logos and how they uh even with all the advertisement on the tv you know they they'll often um they'll often do some kind of a commercial that just seems completely off the wall, uh, speaking about like how they're going to um, eat people or um, making fun of us in a certain way. They are often belittling us or, or they're using uh, different commercials to speak to, you know, the, their brotherhood, the fraternity, their secret societies worldwide. Um, and they're just, they're mocking us. They're openly mocking us, and they basically don't believe that we are wise enough to awaken ourselves to the things um, that they're doing and that we'll never be able to understand the symbolism. And those of us that have been blessed 
with discernment that have come to knowledge on these things, it's the rest of the masses think we're crazy. And if we share this information with them, um, most people just shrug us off as, you know, you're one of those conspiracy theorists or you're part of the helicopter crew. And so they ignore us anyways. And so the Illuminati don't believe that the masses of humanity will ever awaken up to the truth of what's going on and they'll never understand the the nature of the matrix and so um that's why you know we do what we do to try to uh shake people awake you know and 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 show it to them because everybody can now sense that there's something very wrong with the world and it's not you know, it's not as we've been taught in our schools and um, the way things have um, – what we think of the true nature of reality. Things are very much different than, you know, what we're taught out of the school books, what we're taught by our peers and uh, society and culture and um, religion and, and the authorities of this world. Most of them are, are, you know, the blind leading the blind, and they have no idea as to the true nature of reality themselves. And so um, nobody has anywhere to go for answers. And so those people that do uh, have answers, um, those, those that are hungry for them, they're, they're seeking them out. They're looking for, for people that have knowledge that can help bring them to discernment and so that's why it's critical that we do the things that we do and sharing the things that we share yeah well most people don't know it but almost 100 percent of every major corporation um there's this guy uh that he makes these clips and he breaks down the occultic symbolism uh in all the different corporate logos uh and they put this stuff everywhere well, that leads into the next question, Zen. I mean, are they are they actually tapping in? Is somehow they have some memory. Uh, like if we were the first created, and then God created the, the the universe, could there be some memory of the foundational um, methods that God used to actually create things? That um, is there. I mean, there seems to be something to these magical signs and spells and the numerology. Uh, there seems to be some truth to it and some way they can use these dark arts, so to speak. Um, and so, uh, I mean, is that the way the partly the way the universe is constructed? I mean, are they actually using the divine um, knowledge of creation, uh, and they're trying to follow another pattern like that. I mean, what, what, you know, it's. I mean, what do you say that it's the stuff works? I mean, that's the that's the problem. You can call oh, it absolutely. Black. Go ahead. Well, it's basically energy dynamics. The way that everything works, even with magic and with intent. Uh, but we'll pick it up on the other side. Yeah, we'll just, it's only going to be a couple minutes, folks, and then we'll be right back and we'll figure out <laughs> basically how the universe was built. Okay, welcome back, folks. You're listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. This is edition 183 of Changing Reality, where I talk about the most important things. Um, thanks for everybody who's joined the Hijackers Club. It's already up over $200, and uh, so that helps the station out stay on the air. So it's much appreciated. Just go to freedomslips.com and uh, there's a place where you can donate um, or you can get the hijacker special that uh, Nighthawk's got and that's the EMP proof thumb drive bullet with over 500 survival documents on it uh, after the power goes out uh, which by the way there's a story about somebody knocking out a, a substation a power station I think somebody's they're, they're mad about the um, smart meters and I think they're saying to the electric company, PMG or whatever, you can keep on with these smart meters, but you're going to be losing a $100,000 uh, substation every night. It seems to be sort of that. That does look like it's domestic terrorism to me. Uh, somebody used a long-range rifle. 
to knock it out. But um, uh, anyway, so the EMP proof thumb drive with over 500 documents and also um, the survival seed bank Nighthawks got for four. Um, over 2,500 seeds, 35 different kinds of, of vegetables, plants, beans, uh, all non-MGO, uh, all, you know, what they would call um, uh, non-hybrid, uh, a good deal for 100 bucks. So try to get that if you can. Uh, that's worth it. Uh, but also, uh, it's Wednesday, so it's with Zen. And so, Zen, um, you got numerous sites I'm giving people a heads up. You need to get your piece of paper and pencil out, and that's the way you can track Zen and where he does his work. This is just one interview that he does a week. He's all over the place, actually. But once you go ahead and give out your sites, where they, where they can support you and where they can get your latest book, Sons of God, which we're starting to talk about a little bit. But go ahead. Sure. You can contact me at Zen Garcia on Facebook. But my main website is fallenangels.tv, not .com, not .net, but fallenangels.tv. I produce a lot of my videos and radio work there. It's connected to um, the Blog Talk radio program that I do, blogtalkradio.com backslash fallenangels.tv. That's where I, I do all my shows, and then you can find my video work on YouTube under Endeavor Freedom. Um, and, and and you can find my books at Amazon.com, Lulu.com, TatePublishing.com, BarnesandNoble.com, all the, all the major web portals. Um, and the, the last three books that I've done are um, Lucifer, Father of Cain was my fourth book, my fifth book, Awaken to the New World Order, uh, and my sixth book was Sons of God, Who We Are, Why We're Here. And I have a deadline for the 22nd for my seventh book, so I should be turning it in sometime very soon. And um, then Tape Publishing will will go through their process, and we'll have it to the public as soon as we can. Well, Zen, before we start talking about <clears throat> all this magic and why they use all these signs and symbols and all these different things uh, to really create a, um, it, it really is a demonic world that we live in. When you realize everything we're touching and eating and seeing, we're just like, it's almost like in a matrix, like the movie. Um, but before we get into that, um, I, did you see the link right there that I put in chat and in Skype about the explosion at the fertilizer plant? Um, I see a GIF. Um, I don't see a link, though. Okay, it's in the Skype chat box. Okay. And it's right after Rectify put his link in there. Anyways, it's only a minute oh, okay. or so. okay, yeah, I see it. All yeah, right. it's only a minute or so, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it. Uh, it's only like a minute or so, but you see the fire, and then you see... I don't think I've seen a bigger explosion. I mean, that's absolutely incredible. But Yeah, it looked like a nuclear bomb going off, really. Yeah, yeah. let me just play it let people hear it. And... Okay, it's loading up. Dozens kill. Actually, they're up to 70 now. 70 people kill. Oh, my gosh. A huge explosion. Um, so it's only 35 seconds. So this guy's sitting in a car. He's like... 200, 300 yards away from this pretty good fire in this building. And then all of us, I mean, it blows up. It fills the whole camera up with uh, nothing but fire. The shock wave hits the car. At first I thought the car was rolled, but just ab absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. I'll repost that in, in the normal freedomslips.com chat room. And what do you think of that, Zen? Do you think that that looks like terrorism to me? I mean, that doesn't look natural. Yeah, you know, brother, there's so many terrorist events happening in our country and have, have been happening for quite a long time now. Um, but it's not reported on. They don't want the people to get... Um, overwhelmed with the fact that we have terrorist cells in our country 
even right now, you know, it, it's what, um, 9-11 happened in 2001. We're 12 years from that and we still have wide open borders, you know. If we're supposed to have this great war on terror, why are we still allowing, you know, open borders? And it's because they support the terrorists. I mean, for those that, that really do their homework, that look into the strange nature of the matrix and what we're dealing with, the elitists, they support and they fund the terrorism. They funded and created Al Qaeda through the Pakistani ISI. They funded the Taliban. Uh, they are, we're, we're arming terrorist groups in the Middle East. We're giving entire countries over to the Muslim Brotherhood, which is a, a terrorist organization. Uh, we're allowing, you know, we fund the Mexican drug cartels. We send them arms, you know, that whole fast and furious thing where we sent all those guns across the border to these different drug cartels. Rocket and, launchers and grenades yeah, and stuff, yeah. Yeah. So people really have to look into what is really going on because what you will find out is that our government uh, and and people in very high places that are involved in the politi um, political um, um, machine here in this country, they are involved with direct terrorism and with the funding of it. And really, the Patriot Act and all those things that have been put into place, we're the target, not the terrorists. Uh, we're the prize, the Christians, the Patriots. They're coming after us. It's, it has nothing to do with um, going after terrorists because the terrorists are working for the CIA, working for the FBI. If you look into the history of false flag events, it goes way back, you know, even to the Spanish-American War with the, the, the bombing of the Maine, um, World War I, the Lusitania bombing. In World War II, they allowed, they moved the radar systems out of Hawaii so that Pearl Harbor could get bombed so that we could go uh, enter into the war. Uh, the Gulf of Tonkin, that, that was a fabrication. There was never, you know, that whole incident was declassified by the NSA, and they said that it never happened that way. Um, the the Waco killings where they that was a blood sacrifice. If you look at a lot of the dates, like even with the um, the the bombing in in Oklahoma City, that bombing, they are all connected to between April fifteenth and and April twenty second, which is this big pagan uh, sacrificial celebration. Even Waco, I believe it happened on the nineteenth, and the Oklahoma City bombing. On the 19th, and here we have again uh, a terrorist event happening in Waco, Texas, where you know they burned out all those Branch Davidians and killed all those men, women, and children. Um, it, it's they are openly boasting about their ability to pull off these false flag type events and to just snowball the American public into. Uh, funding more of what is, you know, what is really terrorism against them. And so that's why it is you have to really study what's going on and understand what's happening be behind the scenes because if not, you'll, you'll get snookered into supporting um, laws and an agenda where you are the real target and you are the real prize. Yeah, well, um, uh, somebody mentioned that that you know the the what happened in just w Waco a couple hours ago, uh, sort of a sacrifice by fire. Uh, I don't know it, that could have been you know they got systems set up though for those power for those fertilizer plants and you know they have it set up to where um, you just can't get a big explosion like that. They know better than to put all that stuff together. It just it, it just looked like to me that it was another. It was another device that went off. There's no way it could fill up 300 yards of just, that was huge. I, you know, mm -hmm. you're right. It could have been a nuclear bomb. Who knows? Small, small bomb, maybe. But um, they have many nukes. 
I yeah. mean, the, even at the, at the the base of the World Trade Center, there was some kind of mini nuke device used to to um, you know in the basements to to make those structures to where they would be able to implode and collapse on themselves the way that they did. Yeah, and um, real quick, Zen, we got a caller, um, 310, um, what would you like to ask Zen? Up, oh, he, he clicked back out. Uh, that's Skype. So, Zen, uh, this, this black magic and these symbols, um, is, is somehow they remembered, or, or Satan? Do you think Satan actually... You know, I knew there was a war in heaven, and my whole theory is I think a lot of them got killed, and their spirits had to pick up some kind of container, and that's why I think they gravitated to the raptor, like in Jurassic Park, and um, somehow through genetics or whatever, they over years and years, they seem to maybe evolve. Um, you know, there wasn't human beings that evolved from the monkey, but that maybe these spirits in that war in heaven were cast down to these um, raptor-type uh, dinosaurs. And, but I don't think Lucifer and some of the archangels actually got killed. I think they might have retained their actually their angeletic body. Where do you come down on that, and do you think they are they're using some of these some of these dark arts and magic of the, in the world they put us in? And then maybe these are actual, you know, foundational tools that that God used uh, in the creation of the universe or to set things in motion. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, and uh, and I'll I'll answer your question, but before I I forget this, you were mentioning something about you know the survival documents on this EMP bullet. Well, right. I wanted to to mention this before I forgot. I I had a dream just about a week ago. Um, Maybe two weeks ago now, but in, in the dream that I had, I woke up in the middle of the night and something had occurred. And I went to to turn on the light switches and they didn't work. And then come to find out, um, all of the circuitry in the house, all the wiring, had been burned out. And so the next day, I had an electrician come out to try to to fix all these different things. But what had happened is that there was an EMP blast. And so I had a dream about, you know, something like that happening. And I, I pray that it, it doesn't. Um, but I, I just wanted to share that with you before I answer your question. Now, as far as the, the war in heaven and how it was that um, these individuals came to be in dragon-like, uh, in dragon-like, shape and in in visage well if you read about the different types of angels the di different classes of angels um it, it speaks about in ezekiel 28 and isaiah chapter 14 that lucifer before his fall he that he was a cherub and that he um might have been one of the angels that was protecting the mercy seat of the lord and after he was banished from the heavens for, you know, for citing an insurrection and, and causing a rebellion where one third of the angels of the Most High joined him in, in so, you know, seeking self glory and, um, seeking kingdoms and worlds to rule of their own. They were cast out and banished from the heavens. It speaks about this in the second book of Enoch as happening on the second day. And um, when they when he was cast out, one of the main groups of angels that joined him in his insurrection was a, a type of angel called the seraphim angels. And if you look up the word seraph, you'll see that it, it is representative of a snake or a serpent in a lot of the ancient languages, um, Sanskrit, it's seraph in its singular form it is representative of a snake or a serpent well the seraphim angels the these shining ones these glorious angels they were the the dragon type angels those reptilian angels that were cast out with lucifer 
And so it that's why it is that we have um, in our mythologies, in our in, in the oral traditions, even Credo Mutwa, he speaks about this as these particular angels has come into humanity and promising them to to elevate them in culture and civilization as long as they would worship them as gods. Um, and that's cited in, in my book for people that are interested. I speak about that, those oral traditions and those di- different things that are connected to those particular angels and why it was that we have all this symbolism worldwide about the feathered serpent. For those that study the word, um, in Genesis chapter 3, where it speaks about the serpent that was um, that lied to Eve and basically got her to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, causing her and Adam to fall from grace, to lose their immortal bright natures, and to be transformed into flesh where they fell into where we are now into this fallen world that is ruled over by satan and his angels uh those that followed him because this is a fallen world and we find ourselves in a fallen state of being but that ain the angel that beguiled eve um was what is referred to as the nakash uh an enchanter a diviner uh um and he was referred to as a serpent, but it's not a snake-like serpent. This serpent was actually a feathered serpent, he, and he was called the the guardian of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so this is the same type of being that the Mayans and the Aztecs and the different um, the different native tribes from you know across the world because you'll find this symbolism worldwide. Even in uh, India, they call them the the Nagas. And, uh, the you know, the Chinese, they have ancient mythologies about the, the dragons um, coming out of the skies. And they even associate their, you know, their kings and their queens and uh, the people of the royal line as being connected to these particular these particular beings. And even the... You know the the British, the royal families, they are also connected to these uh, these type of beings because they are indwelt by them. Yeah, well, um, no, wherever you look, you're right, Zen. I mean, worldwide, any ancient megalith structure, old city, they always got this. They always got serpents or dragons or uh, some kind of uh, reptilian type of um, uh, image. Uh, crocodiles heads um i mean it's it's pronounced it's all worldwide and they seem to have a fetish about building pyramids that more of these signs and different things that they they do and um you know that's where i was getting at zen what are they tapping into what do they know that we don't know that um no matter which ancient civilization you're talking about they always seem to have a, a common running theme on the, the type of things they build and uh, things about how the universe or the planets are aligned and eclipses. Um, I, I mean, I mean, you think they still retain some of that really ancient knowledge that uh, Lucifer? I mean, he's never physically since you know since there was a war in heaven. He's do you think he's retained his 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 uh, first angelic body so that he can he still can be like an angel of light Go ahead? Yeah, he 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 does have his original embodiment. He's been he's been transformed into what was called a a dark in the first book of Adam and Eve. It speaks about how he was transformed into a dark entity. Um, and what that is exactly, um, we don't know, but, you know, there's all these different symbolisms of, of, of the devil. It even speaks about in Revelation that, um, he's a, a dragon. He's the serpent of old. Um, and so he has that, that similar symbology connected to him as well. And, um, 
as far as the seekers in heaven, they are absolutely utilizing their knowledge of alignment, aligning the as above, so below type of theme. Uh, they're aligning the celestial phenomena so that they can open stargates and, and through ritual, they're utilizing certain aspects of um, what are natural uh, power days, you know, like the solstices and the equinoxes and uh, they build megalithic type structures and the pyramid shape is has its own form of power. And through ritual and intent, utilizing full moons, new moons, um, twilight, um, uh, you know, when the different um, like the solar eclipses and lunar eclipses, all these different uh, heavenly celestial phenomena when these things occur they they do their rituals during during those times because those are already naturally powerful times and utilizing their focus and their intent and their enchantments their incantations um, they are able to heighten that power and to um focus more energy into their ritual and into their magic, therefore creating um, more, uh, you know, if, if depending on what it is that they're trying to do, whether it's, you know, manifest some form of evil or some form of um, conjuring up interdimensional beings or devils, even the kind of things that they were doing in Atlantis for which they were, you know, Atlantis was destroyed by the Father um, for their you know, opening up these particular stargates and portals. It speaks about all these things in the Emerald Tablets of Thought. Um, but anyways, that's why they do what they do, and that's why they align their... You know, it's also for keeping calendars, because that, that is also power. Um, because in the early days, the priesthood and those that they had put into places of power, they were able to utilize the calendar and utilize um, looking into future dates and with the transitions of the seasons and the the movement of the sun across the skies, um, um, you know, the longest day of the year, the shortest day of the year. They were in the solar eclipses. They were able to forecast these events so as to, um, you know, prove to the masses, to those that were following them, that looked up to them for their ability to do these things, it was it was prophetic in nature for them to, you know, have calendars and to be able to tell the people when certain events were going to occur. You know, when the when to plant, uh, when to harvest, uh, when to uh, put the seeds in the ground, when the seasons would change. For those that did not understand these things and did not understand uh, the movement of the stars in the heavens and didn't understand the annual cycle of how all that transpired, those kind of things gave authority over, you know, what would be simple people. Um, and so the priesthood and those that were put in the power by the the fallen ones they were able to utilize their prophetic nature and as far as you know using the calendars and being able to to tell time and also the changing of the seasons um to be almost godlike in the eyes of their followers yeah well there's a lot to be said for it i mean everybody knows what it, what the crisp autumn when when september comes on and how you just feel so different I mean, emotionally, you, mood-wise, uh, you know, that first thing of fall coming on, the crispness in the, in the air. But there is also, there's several people doing it now, but one guy, Suspicious Observers, he's got like an 80% rate of predicting uh, large earthquakes. Uh, he's really accurate, and he uses uh, the alignments of the planet and holes, coronal holes in the sun, and in fact, we're on an earthquake watch right now. Um, 
we we just had a big one, but he says there's another big one getting ready to happen, I think, in the next 48 hours, and he's pretty accurate. Um, okay, that's the top of the hour. Everybody hang on just for a couple of minutes, and then we'll hey, be... Hey, can I ask him a question, uh, uh, hijacker, when you come back? Ask, ask him it, and then he can answer on the other side. All right. Okay, welcome back, folks. Um, you're listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. This is the 183rd edition of Changing Reality. <clears throat> I'm the hijacker. Um, it's Wednesday, so we're talking with Zen Garcia. Uh, he's an author, writer. Uh, his latest book was Sons of God, Who We Are, Why We're Here. And um, we have a caller with a question that's come on. But before we go to that, real quick, um, we are listener-supported, so... Anybody that can, you know, give 10, 20 bucks to keep the station on the air. That's the only way it works is people voluntarily give out of their energy. You know, if you take money, money is basically converted energy. And, you know, they give they give Nighthawk and this station some of their energy to basically pay the bills and um, and to also improve the equipment because Nighthawk does want to go to 360 satellite TV. I mean, satellite radio, which will, you know, potentially they have millions of people, although I'm sure that, you know, the audience won't get, you know, uh, you know, everybody that listens to 365 uh, satellite radio. But uh, still, you know, I think it takes about a grand a month to actually pay for those slots and tap into that that satellite fee, that audience. So if you can give it, just go to freedomslips.com. And donate. Also, before I, I, we get Mike to ask Zen the question, uh, Zen, where can people get your books and where can they find you uh, during the week in your chat room? Uh, you know, your deal. Go ahead. Yeah, I do my um, shows on Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern on blogtalkradio.com backslash fallenangels.tv or fallenangels.tv, one word. Um, and whenever I'm doing my shows live, the, the chat room is open and people are certainly welcome to, to come in. We've got um, a pretty lively discussion among truth seekers and um, people are encouraging each other and helping one another to come to discernment on you know, the things that we're talking about here and so many other critical issues. Um, you can find my work um, at fallenangels.tv. That's our main website, the truth network that we run. Um, I'm the webmaster there, so you can hit me up there as well, or you can contact me at Zen Garcia on Facebook. I post a lot of the uh, shows that I'm doing um, on my Facebook page as well as uh, the guest interviews. Like even tonight, uh, with you know, and every Wednesday night with the hijacker and all the other guest appearances that I do. Um, this this next week, I'll be on um, Paranor- Twilight Paranormal, uh, it's also another, another show. So, I, I do guest appearances pretty often, usually at, um, at least once every other week or so uh, on different radio programs, and so I make that available there as well. You can find all my books on Amazon, Lulu, Barnes & Noble, tapepublishing.com, and um, you can find my video work on YouTube under Endeavor Freedom. Okay, there you go. And for all of you other radio hosts that listen to my show, and I know a lot of you do, I'm not going to tell you how I know, but I know. Um, so Zen's opened up the window, so if you want to do an interview with him, just contact him uh, You know, when before when he was just getting out, before he got out of his book, he wasn't doing a whole lot of interviews and his book came out so he's kind of he's kind of out there now doing interviews so just contact him and I'm sure he'll be glad to get with you um, and so we got a question from Mike uh, Mike go ahead and ask the question and then I was then I put a link in the um, um, Skype chat and you get a chance look at that it's kind of a silent link but um, I'm not sure anybody got killed in that explosion uh, look at it for yourself but Go ahead, Mike. Ask in your question. Right. Uh, excuse my screechiness. I'm in a different. Uh, I'm in a storm and uh, another truck, and it's, I think it makes a squeaky noise. I, I have no idea where it's coming from. It seems a truck, though. Actually, it's a 24 Freightliner. But that being said, uh, everybody's talking about a war between good and evil, and it's a war 
between the woman and the dragon. And it brings to me mind chapter 13, Revelation. Behold, I, I saw, John saw, rather. Um, well, no, I, I take that back. There was a, there's a woman, Jesus Christ's mother, who, of course, gave birth to Christ. That was her seed. And her, her adversary is the evil one, Satan, Lucifer. And there's enmity put between them two. But in these times that we live in, she's, in Revelation 13, she's about to give birth again to her son, Jesus Christ, to the, to the world. But it goes on to say that I also saw a beast come up out of the sea with heads of different nations and so forth and so on. And then it went on to say that um, it makes everybody accept a mark. And I always thought the mark was a monetary system in order for you to accept and give everything your whole life over to this, this evil system this evil that is the adversary of the woman who is who is about to bring Jesus Christ back to earth. Um, so, but, again, I see, I see a problem here because I think the microchip was given to us by extraterrestrials because I don't, I don't think mankind, in the amount of time, like Darwin said, we existed, um, actually were, was able to invest such a microchip. So I got a problem with, with the, the, uh, the mark and the chip being, I, I think the mark of the beast and the chip are fighting each other. But I'd like to ask Ben about that and see what he thought. The mark of the beast and the chip fighting each other? Yeah, the mark of the beast, meaning maybe a monetary system or a, a cognitive, a mental system where everybody accepts it and, and worships the beast, as opposed to something like Bitcoin or, or um, all of this information that we're able to receive because of computers, that, you know, being the microchip. Do you see what I'm saying? Or, um, I, I don't think I'm understanding you clearly, but... I, I would say that we're not positive. It seems to be that it will be something that is connected with economics and buying and selling because it says that in the word that you can't buy or sell without having received this particular thing. Um, and we we do know that you know the microchip, whether it is alien technology, because certainly a lot of things are. It's my opinion that. Um, even the internet and the computers that those were back engineered and those that was you know something that was um that was that came from uh, that you know secrets of the heaven so to speak given to us by the fallen ones uh, even infrared goggles um night vision goggles a, a lot of things that have just recently come to light as far as military technology and military hardware uh, have been back in, engineered from such sources. Um, and the reason I cite this is because um, you, you had m mentioned a long time ago, Mike, you made comments about the, the woman that was far, found on the backside of the moon. Well, William Rutledge, in his interview with uh, Lucas Cantonberla, he he talked about how certain technologies had come out of um, – back engineering from the Roswell crash and he talked about how the computers and um, also that the internet were some of the things that were linked and connected to that. Now whether the microchip is one of those I, I have no um, positive confirmation on that that's not something that he actually spoke about or that I've heard spoken about but there's definitely um, higher technologies and things that are coming to light that are um, 
way advanced and and far superior and and so for them to have come to light so quickly even though we are advancing and that we are learning many things um quickly still the advancements that we've made over just this generation alone seems to have been accelerated in in an, an unnatural kind of way and so <clears throat> you know we know that the that our government uh, has signed treaties with um certain races of um fallen angels and that uh they have been allowing abductions and allowing people to be disappeared in order for them to get get hold of some of these advancements and some of these technologies and that they've utilized them in their uh stealth technologies and the different things that they've brought forth even with the invisibility cloaks and the things that they're working on and and the things that are coming to light to the public are old news you know because anything that we know about is already something that is old as far as the technology that they are working on that they have already perfected <clears throat> and so we never are privileged um unless you're one of the insiders we're not privy to those kind of things now whether the mark is the microchip or whether it's going to be some kind of spiritual thing we don't know it could very well be both um we do know that the the dragon um the serpent the devil um that he will utilize this as a way of tracking and controlling and monitoring people and um you know they and we know that the agenda for the new world order is to to get rid of cash to get rid of currency to get rid of money they want to put um wealth and value um just make it digits on a computer screen so that you know they can give it to whomever they want they can create it out of nothing i mean if they were able to to put into place a system where there was actually no exchange no barter of anything of of real value it, well they being the controllers of such a system just like already with you know the federal reserve um uh owning and basically controlling our our dollar bills and that whole monetary system they can print money out of out of nothing out of thin air and so um and they have all of us using you know their money which is basically nothing more than monopoly money it's not backed by anything of of real value and so that kind of power is what gives them the ability to control and manipulate and deceive us and to sway elections to to fund wars um they can do anything they want because all they have to do is print money out of nothing and if they can implement these um the uh, an economic system that is based on computers where well, they can certainly you know type as many zeros as they want to in their own bank accounts and and um you know that would just be a, another way of controlling us and manipulating us but i didn't understand your your question specifically mike so i i wasn't able to to respond accordingly i hope i covered some of what you may have been asking about Yeah, and so uh, Zen, there's also you got a question from chat from Olive 2M, um, and um, uh, he's asked Zen, <clears throat> does he know the seventh day God uh, rested? But God also talks about an eighth day, a uh, day without time or measurement of time, a time um, uh, with neither years or months or or weeks or days or anything, um, and it's more or less asking you about the Gnostic Gospels. and the eighth day there is and so you know what he's talking about olive uh actually it's mentioned in the book of enoch as well and what that eighth day is <clears throat> is when the harvest ensues because when christ comes again the eighth day will be an eternal age um it will be a a time where we move into where there will be no more evil and there will more, be no more suffering there will be no more need for keeping you know calendars and dates because we will be in a uh, in an eternal age um and it speaks about that in the book of Enoch as well and that was a question 
nails then i put i put in two uh links in the skype a chat and i also did it at freedom slips uh, dot com that chat room as well um you know when i first saw the bombing the first video that i saw of people rushing over there i did thought it was kind of funny that i didn't see that many people on the ground um and the the scene looked funny you know to me and i just didn't give it any thought i went along with three people got killed and 16 people got lost their legs you know <laughs> 100 people were hurt and now uh people are po- reposting the footage uh, and i've seen this but i saw it on a shaky um cell phone camera or whatever and everything was moving so quick and smoke and everything <clears throat> you couldn't really tell but now somebody's break basically broke down the the crime scene and if you take a look at both of those links especially the last one that i put in zen and go to the bottom of the page and you'll see like 12 photos <clears throat> of the uh, victims. And these are nothing but actors. This, this is fake blood. I mean, what's what's going on here? This is like another Sandy Hook where yeah. they just had this big explosion, basically blew out some glass. Um, uh, none of those people are hurt. In fact, a lot of them. People have gone around on the internet and found their photo, and it turned out to be, you know, uh, vets that have lost a leg or whatever, and they dress them up. Um, you know, it looks like their scrap metal has gone through their clothing and their shirts and pants, and yet there's no rip, there's no blood, and there's this fake blood stuff. There's no splattering. There's backpacks that got completely nothing uh, on it. I mean, what, what do you think's going on here, Zen? Why would they... Why would they do something like this? What? What? This is street acting. Uh, yeah, how could they have so? Go ahead. It, it seems to be that there are some elements of of this whole thing that are tied to actors. And you're right. I I looked into some of this as well, especially with um, a, a guy that supposedly had his leg blown off, and he had. You know, his whole leg missing, the bone completely sticking out, and he's holding his leg, but he doesn't seem to be like he's in, you know, dire pain. I mean, I I remember um, watching a video. um, I mean, not a video, but, you know, they have the the combat rescue on TV where one of the, the guys in Afghanistan, you know, these are the guys that go on in the helicopters and save these guys. And when that when they picked up um, the, these different soldiers that had their legs blown off, I mean they were completely unconscious from the blood loss, from the shock, from the trauma. Um, and and you know I saw the one picture of of this guy holding his leg where you can see the bone just all sticking out, and it just it something doesn't seem right. And that's I, not even I, a real. That's not a. That's not even a, how the bone looks. I mean, yeah, some, it, it seems something very fishy, something very weird, and and I agree with you. There's all these um, people that have their clothes all shredded and and blown off, but then they don't have any kind of injuries. Um, there was also um, a, a picture of one of the supposed victims that had died in Sandy Hook. She's also being um shown as being one of the victims here in the Boston Marathon explosion as well. And so there's something very awkward about what's going on. And so we don't know as far as these false flag events now. I mean, it's almost hysterically comical it as to what they are trying to pull off and um you know, in the in the things that they are saying in the media and then it does not add up in in any way uh, so we don't we don't really know and then here's another thing you know just like in the sandy hook um with that event there were facebook memorial pages established in you know hours and even days before the actual event and there's the same kind of thing happening here with the boston marathon explosion there were Facebook memorial pages established um, 17 hours before the actual event. Go ahead, Mike. 
get it done. Uh, maybe because America watches all of this TV and that flickering and the brainwashing. I, I never watch TV. I, I never watch TV. I, I just, you know, I either read articles or, or you know, I'll go on the computer or something, but I never watch TV. So maybe, the, maybe America is programmed by CNN and Fox News to, with the flickering. So then, then they could set up a whole stage of actors, you know, and get the gun control and, and, uh, and, and take all the weapons away that we might be able to fight the government with. And then finally implement the new world order, and, and Satan's going to take over the world with um, with the mark of the beast. That's all I wanted to say. Well, it's absolutely happening. Um, all it's all in our face, you know. And this is the agenda. Well, uh, and they're not trying to hide anything. They they boast openly about it. Yeah, it was then. Well, the thing is that they're just not using any actors. Um, they're using to have to be able to pull an operation off with such a large group of people. Um, are these people can they maybe connected with the Boston uh, coven? You know the witches and the, the Satanist. Because I mean, you know, if you were an actor in it and you were to spill the beans, um, you know, are are these Illuminati? You know, sons and daughters and p- all part of a large uh, demonic network. What, what do you think? Uh, I'm thinking that they would have to be because um, the government just doesn't hire people off of the streets. You know, uh, even in the intelligence agencies, what you will find is that often it's generational. Like a father will will have served in an intelligence agency, just like we, well, we'll pick it up on the other side. Yeah, we'll talk. Well, we're going to pick up about generational uh, Luciferians and Illuminati as well as why the Greys always seem to be messing around with the same blood bloodline families. We'll be right back. A couple minutes. Okay, welcome back, everybody. You listen to Revolution Radio. This is the 183rd edition of Changing Reality, the most important things. I'm the hijacker. It's Wednesday night. Wednesday night means it's with Zen. Um, I'm just hoping everybody would give a little bit. Uh, if you can, throw uh, the, the station five, ten bucks. Uh, you know, maybe join a hijackers club if you like my show. Keep me going here because I, I do get, I do get into despair. You know, my wife even asked me after the bombs went off in in Boston. You know, she said where well, you said if something really big happens, you can't do anything. You know, a big war breaks out or EMP, you're gonna walk away. And I said, well, come on, instead of just a couple of little bombs off, I mean, it's a pathetic. That's not enough to scare me away. I mean, maybe if you set off like a nuke in a city, yeah, that'd be my last show. But uh, anyways, um, so anyways, keep me going because I do have a problem with depression. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll have to basically say, you know, I really don't know. I, I, in other words, now that I know about reptilian human hybrids and the whole world that I've grown up in and the Matrix, I am kind of tired of living. I'll be honest with you. It's like, I'm not really scared of death anymore, and, you know, I don't know. I, maybe I just go off to the woods and fade away. I don't know. But, anyways, help support the station, you know, give the Nighthawk. Also, uh, Zen, he does a lot of good work. Uh, now, that dream that Zen had about two weeks ago, uh, that's important. Uh, because Zen's, uh, he's, he really is a holy man. I mean, he... He he got that dream not because so much he was thinking about it, but I think that it might have been prophetic, uh, EMP proof. Because I mean, this looks like what they're down to, folks. I mean, they're down to doing all this false terrorism. Um, they're you know, in the day of YouTube, a million people are overrunning, picking apart. Fourteen. It was probably a fourteen-year-old kid that figured out the whole thing was fake and was able to get those uh, photos and then get the photos of the. Um, uh, people uh, that were out of the military, that were amputees and everything else. One big, just giant street theater. But anyways, to keep um, uh, Zen going with his ministry, Zen Garcia, um, his fallen angels dot TV. Uh, Zen, why don't you go ahead and list where they can get a hold of your stuff, um, and you know uh, where they can get a hold of your books and your and your next coming book. Uh, a little bit about that as well. But go ahead. Sure. My next book uh, will be called um, Skyfall, Angels of Destiny. Um, 
pre-election and the pre-existence of spirit. And it basically has to do with predestination, pre-election, and pre-existence. And it speaks about who we were before coming into flesh embodiment here. I elaborate on our first state and speak about how it is that we ended up um, being in the flesh. And I talk about the fall. It's kind of a, a follow-up to my Sons of God book um, where I, I speak about these things and in, in, in just um, not in great detail, but in this particular book, I cover it with all of the different passages and scriptures available from all of the different extra-biblical books that I've studied and looked into, and I provide all of that all of those resources for the reader in this book so that you can go and look them up for yourselves and read them for yourselves and and associate them to uh the different things that I cover cuz um well Zen you know that that would be worth getting the book just for you to list I know you did one one video I caught on freedom uh endeavor freedom I think it is um yeah. that's on YouTube cuz I always ca always catch that um but you did one whole show on like the 60 ancient text of all these different places, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Nagamati. I can't go through the whole list of this. A lot of the stuff is foreign and the tongue twisting. But um, you're going to list those things in your next coming book then, huh? Yeah, a, a lot of them. The ones that are connected to these partic uh, particular topics and issues that I'll be covering in this book um, – but for those that have not read any of my books or looked into any of my work, I source from everything, um, from all the different ancient books, and and I provide all of those resources. Even in my fourth book, Lucifer, Father of Cain, uh, there's 290 quotes from different places, different books. Most uh, most people have never heard about, and so um, just those. You know, all those quotes together, they give verification as to the premise of that book. Um, and even in my Sons of God book, I, I also provide extensive quotation from many different myriads of texts that most people have not read or even heard about. And so, um, that's one of the, um, that's one of the, the positive, uh, the commentary that I receive from people that do read my, um, my books is they are very appreciative of of my um, quoting extensively from these various sources so that they can you know go and look into them for themselves uh, and if you are interested um, i'm I'm running a, a four book promotion right now where I'm um, providing my third, fourth, fifth, and sixth books together. For seventy-five dollars, ten dollars shipping and handling, if you're here in the United States, and I will, um, I will autograph all of them. Um, and you can contact me at Zen Garcia uh, two zero one zero at gmail dot com if you're interested, and I'll be glad to get them out to you. I usually send out two two sets um, every week, and so if you're interested, um, that's that's a good way to to get uh, a number of of my works all you know together and and of course I'm I'm autographing them for for free uh for people that are interested. Yeah, and also Zen that's I mean you you've been able to put together the pieces to, of the puzzle. I remember um oh years ago when I was a cultic um pop Christian neocon fundamentalist uh, Bible thumper, you know that whole mindset. Uh, we had I had preachers that would say things like, uh, "Well, you don't want to you don't want to read those writings, or you don't want to read this or read that, because it's like leaving. It gets inside your spirit, and then it will corrupt you. And so you don't need to read like the Bhagavad Gita or other these ancient texts." He says it's only in the Bible. If it's not in the Word of God. The inherent word of God, every single letter and page and everything is all the word of God. Then it's false. It's of the devil. And they would put that in there. They, somebody like you, I mean, uh, years ago, Zen, uh, a, a Christian like you, they would have thrown you out the church. 
uh, <laughs> and I know that, like your book, uh, Lucifer, uh, The Father of Cain. Now, I know, I don't know what you went through, but I know you went through something, and I bet there was one hell of a reaction on that particular book. Am oh, I right? Gosh, I'm still dealing with that, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I, and I'm ostracized for that. You know, I heard, um, I had done a show with you where I was on for an hour and a half, and then I listened to the rest of the show, and, and I, w I just laughed so hard, Hijacker, because you said in that at the end of that show that um, years ago you would have burned me at the stake, or that you would have uh, been one of those that would have, you know. Oh yeah, no, I, I was a, I was a fundamental zealot, Zen. I, oh you know, my gosh, we would have grabbed you, saying that you were possessed and you were. Uh, you could never be saved again. What do they call that? Um, oh, it's slipping me. You know the okay. um, heretic. That I yeah, that a heretic. Lot. But the a person who believed and then he stopped believing, and he can't be saved again. What What do you call that? Uh, a reprobate. I think it's that. I think it's a reprobate. But no, no, you don't realize. Then you get back in some of that Southern Baptist country with some of these Christians, and they would listen to you. They would say you were possessed. That you were of the devil and you're you're spreading writings, uh, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the best thing to do is burn you. And uh, uh, believe it or not, I guess that's how they got people hundreds of years ago. The people in that that uh, mind control mindset and thought they were actually doing the will of God by um, killing people. But yeah. uh, oh no, no Zen, yeah, yeah, I can see it now. There's there are there are thousands of churches. That you could never ever be a part of. I, I hope you know that, don't you? Oh, I, I know that, brother. I, I, because I, I hear it every day. I mean, I can't even tell you the kind of uh, negative emails that I get. People cursing me, telling me that you know I'm going to be condemned for adding to the Word of God, or um, you know, just. Every day. Uh, oh I yeah, that's right. You're that's right. If you add to the Word of God, then your portion will be uh, also in the lake of fire, and you'll partake of all the plagues. Right. So, yeah, yeah, I get that... reminded of that daily. Just now. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, but you're the strong Zen, and that's why they ought to get that four book set because you break all this stuff down and you broke all the bounds. It didn't matter if the writings were ancient Indian writings, Chinese, Aborigines, Mayans. I mean, you, know, you grab all the pieces of the puzzle and you figure out. Okay, there's got to be some truth in it. Now, how does that line up with my basic Christian worldview? And you seem to have it nailed. So, anybody out there, that's that four book set. That's worth seventy five bucks. Um, and normally your books are twenty five bucks. That's what I bought mine for. Yeah, they're usually twenty five dollars each. Right. So. And so I see you're giving one free. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I did. We do have a question in chat. Somebody who joined in later. Um, and they want to hear about your dream, uh, Zen, before we go on. So for anybody that's joined us, tell them about the dream you had a couple of weeks ago. Go ahead. Okay, well, I'll actually I'll tell you about five dreams that I've had over the course of a month and a half that I think are uh, significant. Um, I dreamt about the drones. I was actually with Obama and his bodyguard, and we were – um, watching what I thought at first was UFOs in the sky. And um, me and this other guy, we were able to, with pistols, shoot down this particular whatever it was that was in the sky and then come to find out it was a small, like a jet plane almost like, and, and it was a drone. And so there was, you know, this dream uh, as a warning about the drones. And then I had another dream where this this person almost like a salesman almost like a census worker came to the house to the apartment where I was staying at kept knocking on the door and kept just entering just walking into the house and I was getting irate with this individual because they kept coming into my house and invading my personal privacy and come to find out is that this individual was working for the government, and basically what they were doing is they were monitoring um, everybody, and they were trying to find out where everybody was at, who was living where, 
Um, they, you know, they were trying to um, register all of our guns, and it was basically a setup for what was going to be martial law. And I had another dream that was significant as well. I told you about the EMP dream where um, I woke up that night and all the lights didn't work and um, and then all of the electrical outlets were burned out. I called the um, I called the electrician the next day. He came out and said that all the circuitry was burned out. But it was not just my house. It was everywhere else. And so, I, you know, I realized then when I woke up that that dream was, associate, was associated to what had to be an EMP, um, you know. And so uh, – and then I had another dream. I told you about this one uh, um, on, on a previous show where I was on the – I was in on the East Coast walking through this field, and I saw these Chinese fighter jets going over the land, uh, and I was looking for a place to hide. I entered, I entered into this tower, um, and this tower was shot down, but there were people, you know, like rebels, like almost like a resistance force inside of this tower. It was just a loose-knit group of people, um, not an organized army, but just people that were, you know, trying to to seek refuge and to join together to to combat what was happening here in America. Um, and that tower was shot down. We fell into the ocean, and I was surprised that it, it didn't kill me. I swam to the shore, and I saw the, the East Coast being bombed, and it was all, um, you know, it was all like blasts you know these almost like nuclear blasts all up and down the the east coast um and then the other dream that i had had to do with i was in a meeting with obama and his um these people that were they were discussing israel and i was trying to get close so that i could listen to what they were saying and they were being very secretive about their discussions, even though it was like a an open forum where there was a number of other people, like 20 or 30 people there surrounding um, uh, in in, you know, like in a conference type setting, all is sitting around this one table. And I moved really close to him and his um, almost like his bodyguard type secretary people that were real close to him and they were whispering things to him and I was trying to listen in to find out the details of what they were speaking about and the only thing that I could really pull from that dream was that it was concerning Israel and it was concerning um you know going going against Israel in in some way and how all that will unfold or how all that played out uh, I don't know. I, I just remember that it 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 was something, some kind of planning that had to do with Israel and Iran and the situation in the Middle East. And so these are the the dreams that I had, which are very significant. Um, I think that I I found to be very significant in in remembering them and 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 awakening the next morning and realizing that. Uh, there was some something to the dreams that I had in in all these different dreams, and so I, I pray, you know, that there nothing, you know, of course occurs, but uh, of course in the word it says that there will be uh, peace and security, and then comes sudden destruction. So, yeah, they basically say in one hour, um, right. your judgment comes, and. Um, you know, I, I thoroughly, I, I, you know, I firmly believe that um, not necessarily America, the whole nation, but certain parts like New York City is the city Babylon. Yeah, um, I agree with you. And, uh, you know, they talk about all the merchants where it made her wealth. Um, right. Uh, Zen, and the city of kings, you know, where the United Nations is. Right, right, exactly. Um, listen, Zen, um, just, to, just to kind of a... This is one of these funny things like when you run into a blind person, you ask them, you know, do you ever – can you imagine what the color red is and that type of thing? So this is kind of one of those funny questions. But I know you're quadriplegic. 
when you dream, do you dream sometimes in a wheelchair and then sometimes where you actually have use of your body? Um, no, I always dream where I'm fully able body. And that's what, see, I, I'm, I'm a lucid dreamer too. Um, and, and I have been for a number of years. I, I've been able to wake up in my dreams and I've been able to, you know, manipulate them. And I've learned to control my emotions because when you wake up in a dream, um, it, it's very exhilarating. It's very exciting. And, if you get too emotional, then you'll you'll come back to your body. And I've actually learned to control that emotion while I'm in dreaming and to sustain being in the dream to kind of hold it to see, you know, what will occur and what will happen. And uh, the most significant thing that I've done in my dream when I have uh, woke up and have been conscious is that um, I pray. And when, if you are a lucid dreamer, if you ever wake up in a dream and if you pray that something very significant and profound will, will happen to you. But, um, that's one of the things that keys me, um, and, and makes me realize that I am in a dream is that, you know, I, I have my full capacity as far as the uh, ability to, to walk and to do the, the other things that I've, um, have normally been able to do before acquiring my disability, but that is always one of the triggers to, to let me know that I am dreaming. Oh, I see. And so um, it's because of these old memories before you actually had your accident, um, you're, you kind of remember what it was to walk and, you know, talk and use your arms and stuff like that. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Wow. Wow. Man, Zen, if I was in your position, I think I'd be doing, like, quaaludes every single day and just sleep all the time. Um, well, if you were to do certain things like that, then you would actually lose your consciousness in dreaming. Uh, those kind of things put you to uh, to sleep in such a way that you you lose consciousness in dreaming. And so um, I, I choose not to do those kind of things because my consciousness is more awakened when I am in dreaming. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, I put a link in as, as, and I want to just get your opinion. There's a third link and these are far away pictures of the explosion in Waco. And uh, some people are arguing whether it's uh, 60 or 600 people killed. And I just, in, in, in that link, if you go down about halfway, you will see a town, which is, uh, a ways away, quite a ways away from the plant, but take a look at the the level of destruction, wow. and then take take a look at the cloud. Um, you know, uh, you think that could have been a micro nuke? Uh, I'm not sure. It was a fertilizer plant, so um, I guess. I mean, we'll... look how high, look how big that cloud is. Right, how, right. How much it energy... does. Yeah, it does seem like it was it was something very very significant, and who knows? I mean, they, you know, they they used micro nukes on and energy weapons on nine eleven, um, and they've used them in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, they've used white phosphorus, uh, and so we don't know the kind of things that they will use against the American public because it's my opinion they're already. Uh, performing many terrorist type attacks against the people that are just not being reported on. Uh, and it's also my opinion that what we see today, uh, with the Boston Marathon stuff, with Sandy Hook, with even what's going on in Waco, it's just the tip of the iceberg. All this is coming home to roost. Um, and America is the true prize. All the things that they have been practicing in Iraq and Afghanistan and the Middle East. Those were just, um, the you know, PSYOP programs to see what they could get away with because they're going to implement all of that here in America. Oh, absolutely. That's for sure. No, we can see it all coming. Uh, as far as the timelines, then, when do you actually think that the, the, the seven years of tribulation is going to start? I mean, 
some people say it's going to be it begins in September at the feast of the trumpets or um, um, there's a there's a Jewish holiday in September. Um, I think it's the the feast of the trumpets, is it or right, right, the feast uh-huh. of trumpets. Do you think? Don't you think it has to? In other words, the kickoff of the seven years of biblical uh, tribulation. Don't you think it has to have? It can't be just an, any ordinary date. That it has to be a, a very highly um, spiritual uh, date or event. What do you think on that? Um, yeah, I, I think that there probably is some kind of significant something connected to it. But it's it's my opinion that we're already into the tribulation and that when we see this new pope introduce what will be the antichrist that that will be near the midpoint uh whenever that is but um according to daniel's timeline the last seven years play out from 2010 to 2017 and um i had mentioned previously in a different show with you about the sign of Revelation 12 with the the virgin clothed in the sun with the moon beneath her feet, a child within her womb, and a crown of 12 stars. Right. That this is a celestial phenomenon which will unfold on uh, the Feast of Trumpets in 2017. That on that date, the constellation of Virgo will be, in fact, clothed in the sun with the moon beneath her feet, uh, the planet Jupiter within her womb, and the constellation of Leo and three of the planets as part of the 12, uh, 12 stars that form a crown uh, on upon her head. And so that will all play out uh, on the Feast of Trumpets, September twenty third, 2017, according to the Stellarium or the starry night, um, the different astrological um, programs. You can look it up for yourself, but that particular day, I believe, will be very significant. Whether it will be uh, the day of the last trump, the last day, um, the day of the rapture, we won't know until we get there, but it's my opinion that that day will be very significant because it is encoded uh, into the Word in Revelation 12. Right, and also um, it gets back to what we were starting to talk about at the beginning of the program about you know the black magic and astrology and uh, alignment of um, uh, planets and stars and movements and you know the equinox and that that type of thing. Um, and so yeah, this is an event in the heavens. Um, yes. So yeah, you might be right. Well, we're coming up on the close of the show, so one more time, Zen, just let people know. So you all get your paper and piece of pa- uh, paper out there and help support Zen and his ministry. I mean, he's brought forth a lot of good information. And if you got the capability to get all four of those um, uh, sets of books, and he's got all the different pieces of the puzzle, we, we've just touched the tip of the iceberg. It's worth the 75 bucks. So once you go ahead and say, Zen, where people can get your uh, information and if they want to go ahead and interview you too. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm available for that as well, and um, I will be, you know, also doing interviews on my upcoming book, the seventh manuscript um, that will be released pretty soon, and that's about pre-existence, predestination, and pre-election. But uh, even if you're just interested in one or you know my fourth book, my fifth or my sixth, whatever, uh, I would be glad to autograph those as well. And I do have. Uh, hard copies available of my Sons of God book, which you cannot find anywhere else. And uh, they're actually really beautifully done, and so I can make those available to people as well. Um, You can email me, Zen Garcia, C-E-N-G-A-R-C-I-A, 2010 at gmail.com. And you can also contact me, Zen Garcia, on Facebook, and I'll be glad to speak with you. Okay, thanks, Zen. Listen, I'm going to call you in just a minute, just for a minute. Uh, This is the 182nd edition of Changing Reality, the most important things. I'm the hijacker, uh, and so that shows a wrap tomorrow. Terrell's 03, and later on, right after my show, Steve Travesty with Projectional Red Bean. I'll get it right one day. Over and out.